Welcome back to the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with a weekly news and review for September 26th, 2021. 2021. We've got a great week of news going on with the Masterpiece Transformers. There's some revivals of old projects, or maybe updates to old projects. We also have very, very little bit going on in Legends this week. It's Feast or Famine with Legends, and a lot going on, and potentially a whole lot going on with the mainline. Some Thundercats, Super 7 stuff, some drama going on there, and, of course, Star Wars, which is, I guess you'd say, a mixed week for Star Wars. We'll talk about all this coming up. First off, I want to start off talking about a few things at Show Z. There is the 3016 Fig Zero Ultraman Suit Zero. If you're into Ultraman, you might be into this, and if you're into... The 3 0 and the 1 6 scale, then you will probably be into this kind of thing. He's 12.4 inches tall. He has nine alternate hands. He also has the Zero Slugger Hawk adapter grip piece, force shield generator, zero defender. He also has light up eyes and uh, the color timer in the chest. He's made up of plastic and die cast. Looks pretty awesome. $164 to show Z. And New Age has their pre orders up through Show Z for $82 for the new A27 David Optimus Prime. So that's it's $82 for an Optimus Prime. They're getting more expensive. I guess we should be happy it's not $100 because uh, that's kind of where some of the U.S. retailers are going with some of these prices. But the question is, is this one better than Magic Square? And we've got an incoming, so it's coming in soon, the McFans Toys MS-27A Poison Fog Octane. This is the improved version. It has improved paint, is pretty much my understanding, and an improved head sculpt over the first one. I did talk about this one, but this one's coming in stock, and so I've got mine paid for, so it'll ship out as soon as it's in stock, and I'll take a look at this guy. So getting into some Masterpiece news, we're starting to see some pictures of the MP uh, Thundercracker showing up right now, and the thing about it is that this is going to be the first recolor of Starscream, and, of course, we're going to see a whole bunch of different ones in the Sky Warp and all that coming soon. But this past week has been Starscream Week or Seeker Week. If you've noticed or, or watched YouTube, the feed has been full of everybody talking about the Seekers, which one's better, this version, uh, the deformation space. And, of course, there's the KO of these coming. But Takara did pretty good work with this mold. It looks pretty good. If you're happy with the height of it, then you're pretty much going to be happy with everything on this. And I really think that this will make a nice set. It'll make a great set. Unless you still have your old Seekers and you're happy with them. So there's that. Looks like it comes with some of the same accessories as Starscream. And it looks to be different color. Like slightly recolored than Starscream. Which is kind of cool in a way. So we're also seeing the KFC Toys uh, P9A King Gorilla and the P10A Kingzilla. Now these are the off-white versions and the reason is because, oh, well, people try to say that the off-white would match the animation better and so that's kind of the trend we're going and that's why they get these repaints. So that's why it is repainted, not just a straight reissue, but it's still nice to get kind of a repaint instead of just a reissue all the time. Alright, so let's take a look at this one here, this ape face uh, dude looking pretty good. Now this is a nice comparison to the G1 models and how close it looks. This is a pretty good figure. I think both these figures are pretty good. I hear good things about them. I mean, there's some, I guess, complications in some of the transformation, but overall not that bad. And they do look pretty close to the source material. But now it's starting to look, maybe these pictures are doctored, but wow, this looks really spot on to the source material. There's a couple of little pieces and parts of bits here and there, but overall look really close. Here's King Zilla and his comparisons in all modes to the animation in all modes. And again, still looks really good. I think they've done good work with this. I have yet to pick these up and I keep asking myself, why have I not? Why did I not? Because they're good work. It's good work. I don't know if anyone else is going to tackle these characters. So that's probably why you might want to jump on these. While well, the prices are still, I think these are about $130 a piece, uh, but shows you don't have the price yet. So x is putting out more pictures of their Virtus, and I can't wait for this thing to show up. Well, I guess I can. 
I don't know if I'm looking forward to the transformation of this, but I think I'm going to transform this one right alongside with good old Fans Toys and kind of see which one has the better transformation at the end of the day. But looking at it, it comes with a ton of faces, uh, just a ton of stuff and the kind of the propeller that's already spinning it's got a stand all that good stuff so yeah now let's see what it does in different poses now here's kind of a crouching uh pose right there showing some articulation showing the knee gap and it, like i don't think that's too horrible that's not too bad so it's still kind of holding up to what i would expect out of a really good solid springer and again they have to be the best you know if they're last they have to be the best Here's the helicopter mode, and I think the helicopter mode looks really good, and I think the paint looks really good. They are going for a super premium looking paint, so that really works out also. Here's the uh, car mode, which I have to admit, I looked at a lot of stills. The car mode does look accurate to me, so there it is. And I, I do want to point out one more picture in bot mode, and you can kind of see a little bit more of what's going on with kind of his backpack and this is a little bit of a pelvic thrust I don't know why that's a big thing but anyway uh, it still looks good I look forward to having it and will it be the king will it dominate will it be the best we'll find out soon I think one of the bigger news stories is the fans toys FT40 a Hannibal and this is their Cerebros looking really good now this is actual model Cerebros this is a prototype this is not just renders which is good so we get to see a real world working uh, piece here, what's going on, they've got the headmaster in there and all that, so that looks really good. And also in the head mode, he's going to come with an O face, so that's interesting. I think it's more of a yelling face or like charge or let's go to battle or, or what they did with the retro duke face. But anyhow, it's another option, another face option, so I didn't think that they would do that. I mean, that's kind of a surprise to me. But I like the original one a little bit better. Speaking of the original face, there it is. And I, I think that's one of the better, more classic looks for this character. It's also going to include a stand with it. So kind of interesting how they're going about this character. And there's still a question, are they going to go forward with the rest of it? Well, they numbered this 40 and A, lettered it A. So they still seem to have plans to make the rest of this guy. So... I guess fingers crossed. I don't think it's going to be a huge seller if it's like thousands of dollars. I know no one knows how much it will cost for the body for this, but at least we get the head. At least we get Cerebros. The Cerebros is going to be a masterpiece scale. I mean, nobody else is tackling this, and I like that. I like that Fans Toys is working on tackling stuff no one else is. And let's not just be petty and directly compete one on one, head to head, for things that we already have and are happy with. So TFC Toys is giving away the HNBA EX Dongfeng Dashing. Dongfeng Dashing? Did I say that right? I might have said it wrong, but this is going to be the lucky draw figure they've put out. So pretty cool, pretty interesting. Uh, here it is with uh, some of the things going on in the back there. Uh, I think that some people already have. I think this mold's been out, but it's it's a massive repaint, uh, completely redone there. So looks pretty interesting, and it, the way it's design and deco it's definitely got uh, a much different vibe than something i've ever seen and here it is in the alt mode really looks good uh, i like the gold accents on there and all of the the paint that's gone into this looks interesting i wonder who the lucky winner is going to be they said it was only going to be one person that gets the winning of this winning for the lucky draw i thought lock, lucky draws were vac metalized so Jazai Toys, and I, I don't know, am I even saying it right? Jazai? Jazai? Anyway, Jazai Toys is making something that they call the cap ring. And, well, th this is something else that I've been hearing a lot, that they haven't actually made anything yet. They just make designs. It's like, hey, this is my art. Uh, I designed this. It could work if somebody wanted to make it. So if someone wanted to manufacture it, it could work, because I never see them for sale. And, and now I'm hearing that it's more or less just kind of a project. But here it is in real life, and uh, shout out to Vector Sigma for pointing this out that it actually is the first one that has a prototype of the Jazai Toys designs because they never seem to get made or bought or sold, or I just don't know where to buy them. So, anyway, it's pretty cool, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I'm not really sure how they even came up with this idea, but there it is. 
So this isn't really a masterpiece, but I'm going to throw this out there. This Half the Battle Toys is making sort of a third party 3D printed and then hand painted, or I don't know how they paint it, but painted to match almost perfectly. It's the Maw. It's the Maw filler. Now they've been talking about this and showing it off for a bit, but they're working on a completely different entire kit to where you could split your Unicron into two and have a bot and you can have the planet mode and and that kit's going to be like 130 bucks this thing is 40 by itself so it's quite expensive but the end result is pretty good it's kind of hard to argue with the end result here and it does look good i kind of just got used to my blue that's in mine and i the kind of the color breakup doesn't bother me but this is actually what hasbro promised and they failed to deliver so that is one of the points that hey this is what we put our money down for having a fully uh, yellowed, orangish yellowed maw. And we got part of it blue. So there's reasons, of course, reasons, budget, cut cost or whatever. But it's fixed here for 40 bucks. Okay, so we have some more pictures of HasLab's new HasLab project for the Victory Saber. And these are colored pictures of i guess a colored painted prototype i don't think it's renders because it doesn't look like renders to me and i do want to say that it looks pretty good it looks pretty much spot on with the renders that we got from somebody else that did a digi bash of it so it looks pretty good uh, i kind of like it if you're in on this for the 180 then you're going to be be happy with it. You're, you're going to be happy with it. You're going to buy your filler kits and stuff when the, when the time comes and all that. Here it is in the alt mode with the cannon, the first unlock, which which it hasn't been backed yet. It's still not funded. We got 15 days to go or something like that. I think it's like 15 days and we need 1,600 right around there to, to back it. Now, I already said I guarantee this will get backed and it will get backed. But I don't know how many of the unlocks we're going to get, and I don't know how deep it is. I don't think we'll hit the 20,000. I don't. I don't think we'll unlock all of it. Uh, we may hit the 17, but I, I, there's just, I just don't think we'll hit the 20. So that's why I don't think Hasbro was very aggressive uh, with it. But anyway, here we are with just the Saber. They call this guy Saber, and he's got his little nose cone shield right there and all that kind of stuff. So looks pretty cool. Looks pretty good. I had a chance to grab a vintage one that was complete for 75 bucks a few years back, and I thought about it. Uh, when they released the first uh, the first masterpiece, and I was like, nah, I think I'll just stick with the masterpiece. But now I wish I had grabbed that one. It was complete and in pretty good shape. And I was like, oh man, shot myself in the foot there. This is the color of the the Victory Leo, so looks pretty good. Uh, I pretty much exactly what we expect. You still kind of show off the waffling right there, but it's it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. But I've decided I'm not in on this set, and I'm actually canceling some pre-orders from other things to reroute to buy, believe it or not, a bunch of extra Transbot stuff. And Legends is really light. I, I gotta say, with Legends news, there's really nothing going on this week that I saw that was much different than any other week, other than maybe the price of the Prime for New Age popping up. But, this is more pictures of the PPL Toys, the OP Warrior. And I gotta say that I feel like he looks a little bit cheap. Uh, I kind of thought he'd look a little bit more premium, but he, I think he's like 35, 38 bucks, something like that. So price-wise, not horrible. It is sort of legend scale. You are getting kind of what red should have been, but not bad. I mean, it's not bad. I would have liked to see a little bit more paint apps to it and stuff like that, but it's a kit and that's just the way it goes. And we're gonna see this kit here in just a second. And here we go with kind of a few things that's uh, included here. So you get the jetpack and you get what appear to be blast effects you can put in the jetpack and all that kind of stuff. But you get to see the back of it and just kind of how clean it is. It's really hard to make them this clean. Well, I think Magic Square is already this clean, but, but it is more expensive. Magic Square is more expensive than this guy. Now, here's the thing, though. I do, for 40 bucks or almost 40 bucks, and you've got to do, like, a lot of the work yourself. Pretty much all the work yourself. They're more or less designed it. And they produced it. Now you gotta cut every single one of those sprues and put it together and all that kind of stuff. So that is a little bit disappointing, but some people really love this. Some people love putting models together and it really you know helps them out. It's a lot of fun, it's something they do on the side. But actually, that's not me. Okay, so getting into some mainline news here, I'm gonna start 
with all this, like, what's showing up at retail with a picture I snapped at a Target, and I have to say, I was shocked to see so many Grimlocks, and absolutely no uh, slag, was it slag? Anyway, we don't have the other one uh, just yet, but we got the Grimlock. Tons of it. And so I don't know if this is holding up uh, the distribution or maybe this was a late shipments. I don't know. But if you look at this one picture, you can see everything around it. And we've got the the Bumblebee four pack, the Universe Collide one on the right, on the bottom. You see a bunch of masterpiece uh, of the primes and which we're going to talk about in a rumor list coming up, which which I think the rumor list is pretty true. And then you can see a couple of other things in Studio Series stuff up top so all around there's all kinds of stuff but it's all aside from the bumblebee and the prime all of it's old there's very little new stuff that's showing up it's all old stuff showing up in my opinion way way late okay so what's showing up around the world here well in us the beast wars is showing up now it's not showing up my neck of the woods but it's showing up in other places so uh, i'm curious about how this line is going to do because it is very heavily priced it in my opinion, is overpriced. We may see them go on sale, or we may see Beast Wars collectors snag these up like crazy. Who knows? But this is a U.S. thing. Now, in Canada, they're already getting this, uh, the Sharktacon, which I'm looking forward to. And I just really don't want to overpay for that thing to pre-order online. But all the pre-order lines are a few dollars more, and the price is already a few dollars more. So you're already paying like six bucks more. If I can get this now, I could probably get it at still the $19 price point before they shoot up in the in the fall pricing and then uh this one here i think is in the uk and they're starting to get the record i actually got my hands on a record and i talked about that on retro wednesday but it seems like record is selling very well and his wave mate the thrust isn't selling at all but is that is that just me seeing that i'm just curious so what i'm seeing in the new news is rumors and leaks and all this kind of stuff which I love. I love this because if it turns out to be true, it's awesome. If not, uh, then, well, it was still fun to think about, right? So, uh, Walgreens, we have the Minerva. So, it's a Legends uh, Deluxe, I'm sorry, Legacy Deluxe Minerva coming out for a Walgreens exclusive. So, that seems kind of interesting. I still haven't seen the Walgreens exclusive that's supposed to be out now, but I seem to always find Walgreens exclusives. There's never a problem, so I expect to find it. Also, at Target, we're supposed to be getting something called Red Card 1 or Red Card 2. So I don't know what that is. So interesting to see what that will be. Also, the ma movie masterpiece Blackout makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And I could see that showing up at Target. Because Target's been getting a lot of the MPM figures. And I don't see why they wouldn't. Now, Walmart getting some deluxe. Uh, so, Velocitron with a Burnout, a Road Rocket Blur, uh, Clamp Down, and Cosmos. And then at the Voyager scale override and road hauler so pretty interesting to see if this really comes to fruition so uh, it's just interesting this is something i didn't know about and here it is if this is true now leader velocitron black convoy so we'll see how that turns out so they're trying to keep red alive so with the red wave one is g1 galvatron and a g1 shockwave which i think are great it's a good idea i mean i'm sure that if they do a Galvatron, they would do a Galvatron that is is getting uh, the change. It's turning purple and clear and all that kind of stuff. Like they're doing with the Megatron. Then they're redecoing a Megatron and a redeco of Optimus Prime. I, you got to keep the main ones alive, I guess. Uh, I don't know if Hasbro feels like the red is a, is a success or Walmart feels like it's a success. I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's a success to me, but it'll be interesting to find out. Okay, Wave 2, they're saying... Two Optimus Primes, two Megatrons. So, uh, Prime Optimus Prime and Prime Megatrons. So, that's kind of cool there. And then, another G1 Shockwave and G1 Galvatron carried forward. And so, with, with this red, I think carry forwards, you can sort of expect. So, that, that's that. Now, Wave 3 would be a Thundercracker, would just be a repaint of their Starscream. A Nemesis Prime, times two, and then a Prime Optimus Prime carried over. And then way forward would be Dark Energon Megatron, and then uh, G1 Cliffjumper would repaint of the massively large Bumblebee, and then uh, Thundercracker. So, I can see this. This all makes sense. I mean, I can see this. Now, maybe someone sat down and thought it's something evil mastermind here. 
but I can still see this. Now, at the bottom, it's talking about the Generations Beast Wars Pterosaur, and then uh, Tarantulas, Cyber Shark, and then Canine. So, that all sounds like fun. Like, I, I would like to see a Pterosaur or Tarantulas. Uh, Cyber Shark, I don't know. I don't know if that was one that, that would appeal, but they all look like good ones. And then, last, talking about Hasbro Pulse doing uh, Shattered Glass, Wheeljack, Soundwave, Blaster, and Ultra Magnus. And I bet you, I'm curious about Soundwave. Uh, well, I guess I'm also curious about Blaster, so... <laughs> I'd like to see all that and how they do all this stuff. And then Ultra Magnus, that doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, and then Transformers Shine, uh, Soundwave versus Optimus Prime, and Bubblebee versus Starstream. So some, some new stuff there. Uh, be interesting to see what that is, if it's a thing, if it really is a thing. Get ready for a big surprise, slash not surprise, actually, that the chess set, the $700 chess set, didn't get funded on Kickstarter. $700 chess set, it was, the funding was unsuccessful. I'm not surprised at all, actually, to tell you the truth, that a $700 chess set, I mean, who's spending the money on this? I know there's people out there that collect chess sets, and I know there's transformer collectors that also like chess and all that kind of stuff, but I don't think it appealed to the, the broad market and not for that price. So there's the two issues with it. And it's, it's just one of those things that I was, I was thinking to myself, I can't see this thing actually getting funded, but it already had some orders and I was like, well, it'd be kind of cool to see it happen, I guess, but it didn't happen. So before we get into Star Wars news, I want to quickly touch on Chitara a little bit here and she is being backed up to quarter two of 2022. And the other figures from her wave are showing up. Now they're trying to say that they had issues with her face and her head sculpt and the quality control on it didn't work out. So they're holding her back and they're fixing it. So that's what they're saying. And if you order to BBTS, then they are just delaying this figure. If you order separately, they are splitting the wave and the other three will be shipping out in that way. But if you already ordered individually, then you'll be taken care of. Uh, it, you won't notice it at all if you order them individually, like I did. I ordered them all individually, not as waves, because if I decided to cancel one down the road, I didn't want to have to cancel a whole wave, so I did all of them individual. So looking at this, uh, we already have the Slith on the left there and on the Captain Cracker guy on the right there with his parrot are in stock right now. Jaga, we're still waiting on him and he should be out uh, next month. So all those would ship. I'm probably just going to wait for Jaga and ship them all when they arrive because, you know, that four bucks, that starts to add up with the shipping. But if you're in on these, then that's where we're at. The rest of them are all delayed also. And I'm not surprised, but then again, I'm not upset because I don't, I don't really want to fork out like three or 400 bucks on these all at once. I don't mind dropping like 200 at a time. That makes it a little easier. Okay, getting into some Star Wars news, some Black Series stuff going on here. The 50th anniversary of the Power of the Force carded versions of Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, and Greedo are up for order at the Disney shop, Shop Disney. Now, if you spend more than 75 bucks and enter the code Shop Magic, it's free shipping. So you buy all three of these, you still need to spend like four cents <laughs> to get free shipping, just so you know. But anyhow, it's uh it's pretty cool that they're doing this i i remember these card backs somewhat fondly i think the vast majority of collectors just uh can't stand the card backs to tell you the truth like why not go vintage but i think they're gonna hit every era with this and why not and it's a good way to get a figure i would prefer this actually to what they're doing with the archive wave i do not like archive wave packaging actually was side by side with George Lucas as he's making these movies. They did divorce while he was making Return of the Jedi, I believe. And that's one of those things that my wife knows a lot about my collecting and what's going on with me. She knows a lot what's going on with him. And she has to feel a little bit of a connection to the movies herself because she was around it so much. And I'm sure he bounced ideas off of her and talks about it. And she saw the good and the bad and the high and the low. And she, she probably views this as a low. So what do you think about this week's weekly news and review? What else is going on out there that I missed? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Teddy Ramhanger, out.